Okay, this is a little tutorial or video to kind of give you direction with regard to question number seven in our sapling homework. What you need to num know, number one, is that this is a true problem. You haven't seen anything like it before. But number two, you have to trust that you have the skill sets inside of you and the tool belt needed to do the work. A lot of students will look at this and say, I don't know what to do, and throw up their hands. You just need to give yourself per permission to realize it is a problem. You have to try some things and see what you can do and then try some more. This is an uncomfortable place for you. You've not been here. You've always, maybe, been given examples and you're following examples and you haven't faced real problems. So let me give you some of my problem solving strategies for this problem here and then try to use them in the future problems. Don't just Google how to do this problem. Try to do it yourself because we want to build that skill. So here's what the problem is saying. We have a compound and this compound is MO2O3. All right, so if we use our nomenclature rules, we have molybdenum 3 oxide. But this is what we know, MO2O3. And they're telling me that I have 10.5 grams of it. They're telling me that this is reacting with some oxygen and producing a new oxide. And I don't know its subscripts, mo X, O, Y, I'll call it, okay? And they want me to know this formula. Well, this is what we learned in our last class. If you want to know an empirical formula, we have a little poem, okay? Percent to grams, grams to moles, divide by small, multiply to make whole. Okay, so that's our poem. No percents are given in here. But grams are given in here, okay? So maybe I don't need to go percent to grams. I could start right here. Grams to moles, divide by small, multiply, make whole. If I could get grams of oxygen and grams of molybdenum in this compound, then I could take off running from the part where I'm starred. Maybe I can do that. All right, let's see how we could do that. What do we know? These are the things that I know when I look at this. However much molybdenum is in this compound has to be the grams of molybdenum in this compound. Stop and think about that. Does that make sense? I'm not adding any more molybdenum. So if I could figure out the grams of molybdenum in this compound, it would have to equal the grams of molybdenum in this prop compound, and I'd be set with part of it. All right. The other thing I know is if I could figure out the grams of oxygen in this compound and how many more additional grams of oxygen are being added here, I could get the grams of oxygen in this compound and I'd have the second thing I needed in order to figure out the empirical formula. Now, this part and this part, these two things right here. This is something that you learned how to do. You've got a couple ways to do it with the borax example we did in class or the example of the iron oxide in the lecture I presented to you, I showed you how to take grams of a compound and calculate the grams of the element in the compound. So you know how to do this skill. You need to practice doing it. All right. So you're going to take the grams of this and you're going to be able to calculate and figure out the grams of those guys. All right, so then all we have to know is the added grams of oxygen. How are we going to figure that out? Well, look at what we know. We know how much this compound weighs, and we know how much the new compound weighs. How did it get heavier? What got added to it? Well, oxygen did. So in my example, if I took 12.062, which is the mass of the new compound, minus the mass of what I started with, wouldn't I know the grams of oxygen added here? It got heavier purely by adding more oxygen. So now I know this number. Once I know those numbers, now I'm starting off right here. Okay? So I don't want to leave this problem without one more thing, one more time telling you it is a problem. It is not something you should look at and say, ah, oh, I can do this. I've seen one just like it. No. But you have all the skill sets. Now, 
if you are struggling with the tool of going from grams of a compound to grams of an element within the compound, you need to get help with the tool before you ever try to work on solving a problem. So what are the tools that I expect you to know at this point already to where you realize you can do it and you can convert? You know how to go between grams and moles of a compound or an element by using the molar mass. You know how to go between moles of a compound and moles of an element in that compound by using the subscripts. Okay. You also know how to get Avogadro's number involved, but we don't have to worry about doing that. And then we've got this skill set of what to do when you know grams, you can get to an empirical formula by doing these things. So make sure you understand you've got these tools that you can do. And then realize that all of the problems in this exercise are going to utilize these sets of tools how to convert between grams and moles, moles of a compound versus moles of an element, and how to use these steps to get to an empirical formula.